astrophotography the photography of stars and some stuff made from stars and revolving around stars and some extra stuff made from stuff and revolving around stuff you know taking photographs like these yeah it is very technical and has a steep learning curve but then i guess something snapped in my mind and i thought hmm deep sky astrophotography yeah shit's about to get balls out terrifying deep sky astrophotography by definition is photography of deep sky objects how surprising now to be a deep sky object you have to follow two rules one don't be in solar system and two don't be any individual star people say that photography is a very expensive hobby but all i want to say to those people is that deep sky astrophotography it is different You see it's not about money it's about experiences. Oh by the way it's fucking expensive. Well if you want it to be if you throw money at it certain aspects get easier and less frustrating. You can buy state of the art telescopes, special sensors, tracker and equatorial mounts a due heater for god's sake. I can buy all of this stuff too but something something stop me from doing so. Anyway all I have is my entry level DSLR uh, Canon EOS 1300D a telephoto kit lens that came with it 55 to 50 mm and a tripod 60 inch Amazon basics Yeah I took that gear doesn't matter bullshit very seriously Okay with gear like me which doesn't exactly screams premium I think I should make one thing clear first don't expect this from this Anyway we need to carefully plan stuff out to compensate for well this I have broken down this research or planning if research seems a bit heavy word for your taste into a five step program which is going to look a lot like powerpoint presentation deal with it the first thing to do is to select a subject now if you are like me and suffering from this you have three major options Pleiades a star cluster Andromeda galaxy a whole galaxy of stars and Orion Nebula a cloud of dust. Yep. You can choose any one of these three for your first deep sky photograph based on various factors like distance which doesn't affect anything just a cool thing to know. How bright they appear to us in night sky called apparent magnitude or how large they appear to us from earth. Moon is for just scale by the way. And I am going for Orion Nebula. Okay, once you have selected your subject, you might want to know when and where will be that stuff visible in night sky. For that I recommend using Stellarium. It's free and open source mostly. You just enter your location, date and time and what you want to see. And here's your exact night sky. Just note the general direction and angle of incline in your mind and you are good to go. Another important thing to do is to choose a good location. Basically what I mean is find a dark location away from urban areas. You know where you can actually see things other than moon in night sky. When it comes to that, I'm good, I guess. I live in lower Himalayas, and altitude really affects how clean and thin air is. I am at 1830 meters, by the way. On good days, you can see peaks literally a hundred kilometers away, and there is very little urban activity around me. And well, fuck. So I decided to go somewhere else. You can use online tools like Light Pollution Map dot info to see where are the closest dark skies from you. The fourth thing to make sure is that weather would be clear that night. Predictions generally work fine, but if you live in a place like UK, both that one and this one, you might know that weather is one sick son of a bitch. So good luck, I guess. The final thing to check for is that moon should not be up and visible in night sky, because if it is, well, it's like shooting a candle against sun. Well, that's pretty much all for preparatory phase. Let's get to action now.
Well, I have set up my tripod and other stuff. The nebula will appear right over there. And let me explain to you my settings. Manual mode because you want to keep the exposure same all around. Shutter speed of 2 seconds because that worked best for me. Aperture at its widest. ISO 6400, I can't go any higher than that without ruining everything. Manual focus of course for obvious reasons. Looks good, right? No. The thing with deep sky objects is that they are very faint and dark, despite being huge in night sky. And in photography, there are four major ways to shoot things that are faint and dark. One, we use flash, but I have a feeling that it might not work. Second, increase aperture opening or reduce f number, which is understandable, but you would already be working with widest aperture you have. Your third option is to increase ISO, but you might know that it will decrease your signal to noise ratio, giving you a blotchy mess of a picture and anyway you would be working with a pretty high value already. The final option is to increase shutter speed. You can theoretically expose your sensor for hours. Well, practically sensor heat, dead pixels and dead battery will limit you, but still an hour or hour and a half is possible. But there are two problems. The first one is that as sensor heats up from long exposure, more noise is generated. The second one, however, is a much bigger one and you can't do much about it. The earth rotates on its axis. As you try to expose longer, the earth rotates and sta start to become trails. That's how you get these gorgeous shots. So here's the situation. I can't use exposure times longer than 2.5 seconds. Neither I can check up ISO because it's already at 6400 and nor I can open aperture further. And these settings give me at best this picture. Now what do I do? The answer is stacking. Stacking essentially means putting image data one over another. It can be used for pretty much anything you want, be it focus stacking, long exposure stacking, or in this case to reduce noise by median filter. We will be using a free and open source application called Deep Sky Stacker. More on that later. First, let me take some shots. Okay, done. I took 80 shots. If you take more, the better it gets. Since I don't have a tracker, the subject moves across frame as earth rotates. So I have to shift my frame again and again after some shots. Also, I use my smartphone as a remote shutter to avoid any vibrations. Let's get to processing now. So this is Deep Sky Stacker. UI hasn't been updated since the dawn of internet I guess, but it is fairly easy to use and I won't explain how to use it. Basically what it does is, it takes your image data, these 80 pictures I took, and some calibration frames. Then it automatically rotates, zooms and adjusts them all, stacks them one over another, and gives you output. If you want to know more about it or what calibration frames are or some other technical stuff, the video which I learned from is linked in description. I have also linked the documentation page of DSS if you are into details. Anyway, here I have registered the images and even though I have a fairly good quad-core AMD CPU with max clock rate of 3.7 GHz, this is going to take time, as total image data is roughly 3.9 GB. Yup, that's the image. But however blend it seems it does have the image data of all the pictures I fed in. I'll process this further on Photoshop, so I'll export it as a 32-bit div. In Photoshop, our TIFF image is of 32-bit depth obviously and a total of 800 megabytes in size. You can only work with a few tools in 32-bit depth and fortunately Levels is one of them. What I want to do is push the black point farther till it almost clips the image data and pull back highlights back the same way. Do this a couple of time and your image will begin to reveal itself. Rest of processing is essentially your own imagination so I'll skip it. Ladies and gentlemen, we have our final picture. I know it is not very good, but I'll take it on the account of my gear and some other reasons which are going to sound just like excuses now. Anyway, this is what it is. Days of planning, hours of shooting and processing for a few photons that travel thousands of light years only to fall on my sensor. I'll meet you next time, hopefully. Bye for now.